Hey everyone, my name is Double D, and today I wanted to show you how you can monetize your API. If you're not so sure what an API is, I have other videos on my channel where I talk about this concept. First, I have this one where I talk about basic web development concepts, and one of them is an API, or application programming interface. And I also have this one where I demonstrated how to use a real-world public API in your web app. Feel free to check out these videos if you want to learn more about this subject, but for the sake of this video, you can look at it like this. An API is essentially a service that can do something for you, the user. The service usually involves one of two things. First, it can do some kind of logic or data manipulation. A simple example for this would be a calculator API. You send a request to the API and you give it some inputs like these two numbers and you say the operation that you want to apply. The API does the work and then returns a response. The second common thing that APIs do is they fetch data from a database. Let's say we have a weather API. Once again, we send a request to the API telling it the name of the city as well as the date. It performs a query in the database, gets the actual weather data it has for that date, and it returns a response. Hopefully now you get an idea of what an API is. Another thing you have to understand is that as a developer, you're going to find yourself on both sides of this relationship. You're going to be the user because you're going to use other people's APIs and external services but you're also going to be the one who provides an API and writes the actual code that takes requests from users, performs some logic, and then returns a response. Well, today I'm going to talk about the case where you, as a developer, have your own API service, and I'm gonna show you how you can make money from it. Let's get started. So here I have an API that I created. It's called the Random Persona API. And it basically gives you some basic data about a random person. As you can see, this API has four endpoints. And if we click on this first one, we can see that it returns some random personal data. And if I scroll down, we can see an example that shows a JSON object that we would get as a response if we made a request to this endpoint. So we will get a name, gender, age, occupation, and an avatar, which is a URL of an SVG image. If I open it, you can see that it's this cool pixel art from the DiceBear website. So every time you make a request to this endpoint, you will get a different avatar, a different name, and so on. The way this works is very simple. I have a static data source of 100 names and 100 occupations, and when a request is made, I pick a random one from that source and I return it to the user. If you're interested to see the source code of this API, I wrote it in TypeScript and it's available on my GitHub page. The link will be in the description. Anyway, that's the first endpoint. I also decided to separate the data into three other endpoints. So if you, for example, only need the person's name, you can use the random name endpoints. It has one optional parameter where you can specify the person's gender. Then you also have the random occupation endpoint where you just get the person's job title. And lastly, the random avatar endpoints where you get the URL of the SVG image. So that is the API that I created. You might ask yourself, how can you use this? Who would need such an API? Obviously, this is just an example that I created for this video, but one use case that I can think of is this. You're creating a web app and you have users and profile pages, but there's no users in your app yet because you're still in development. So in order to test the interface of your application, you might want to use some kind of fake data just to test things out and see how it would look if there were, let's say, a thousand users. These users have all kinds of different names, images, etc. Either way, I hosted my API using Heroku. It was a pretty straightforward process and it is now publicly available on this link. If you go to it, it will say, welcome to the random persona API. And if I go to the random persona endpoints, 
as you can see, I get the actual data in JSON format and everything works. However, this API is public and it is free to use for everyone. Obviously, I don't want that and I want to put a price on the service that I'm providing as a developer. So in order to monetize my API, I'm going to use a website called ByValue. ByValue is a company that provides a platform where you, the developer, can monetize your service and you can turn your code into a running business. When you go to byValue.org, you can click the Get Started button in the top right. At this point, you're going to have to log in. You can either create an account or you can log in with GitHub, which is very convenient for developers. I'm already logged in, as you can see in the top right. So here we have two options. The first one is called Turn Code into a Service, which means you're creating an API from scratch. And the second one is Distribute an Existing API, which is our case, where we already have an existing hosted API and we want to monetize it. Let's go ahead and select the second option. Here we're going to say what's the name of our API. We're going to enter the URL where it is hosted. We can set up some security measures. In my case, the API is public and can be called by anyone. But if you're using a real life API, you probably want to set up these security headers, which is pretty easy to do using Express.js. Then you have an option to provide an open API documentation file, or you can manually describe each endpoint. Let's say that we are a lazy developer who doesn't write documentation. If that's the case, we can describe the first endpoint called random persona. The description is going to be something like returns random personal data. This endpoint has one parameter, which is gender. And an example value would be male. Also, this parameter is optional. And if we go to response, we can click on test endpoints and we can see an example output. And that's it. We can repeat the same process for each endpoint. Earlier, I showed that I have four endpoints, so I would have to do this three more times. But I wanted to show you how easy it is when you actually do write documentation and you have your open API file. So in case you're not familiar with open API, it is basically a standard way of describing your API in detail. You describe every endpoint, all the parameters, all the response data types, everything. If you want to write your own open API specification file, you can use an online tool like swagger.io. This is the website I showed earlier, and this is the content of my open API file for this specific API. As you can see, for each endpoint, I have a URL, a summary, a description, an array of parameters, different response codes, and so on. This is an official standard for documenting your API, and you probably want to have this file if you're seriously working with APIs. Anyway, I have this file in JSON format, and I'm going to go back to By Value and select it. The file is uploading. And now, after a few seconds, I have all of my documentation right here. All the endpoints are described in detail. There's even example responses and the ability to test it once again. After this, I'm going to click on Create. And now, this is the fun part. This is where you get to set the price for each of your endpoints. As you can see here, this is the price that reflects a thousand API calls. So if I put something like $300 here and click on Apply to All, this means that now all these endpoints cost $0.3 per API call. Basically, you divide this number by 1,000 and you get the price of each API call. I can also modify these numbers and set the price for each endpoint individually. For example, for my API, it would make sense that this random persona endpoint is 0.3 per call. 
but all the others should be cheaper because you get less data than you get on this one. So I'll set the others to $100, which would make them $0.1 per API call. Finally, I'm going to let my users have a free trial where they are free to use the API for the first, let's say, 10 times, where they won't be charged at all. This is where they would test the API and see if it is what they're looking for. After the trial ends, they would have to pay for each additional request they make. And that's basically it. Your API is now live and ready to use. You can enter more information about your API, like the name of the author, the description, contact email address, and so on. One good thing about this platform is that you have direct contact with the developer of the API you want to use. You have their email address, and you don't have to rely on the platform itself to contact them. But the point is that your API is ready to use, and if you want to share it with others, you can click these three dots in the top right corner, and you can click on Invite and Share. This will give you a link that you can share with your friends, other developers, whether it's on your website, your LinkedIn, social media, email, whatever it is. And when somebody clicks on your link, they will come to this page where they will be presented with your API. They'll be able to test it and see if it is what they're looking for. If it is, they can click on pricing and they'll be able to subscribe to it after they enter their credit card information. And just like that, you can start making money from your API and get actual compensation for your work. Now, there's a few things I want to mention. One thing that is, in my opinion, great about this platform is the way their pricing works. You noticed that from the developer side, we didn't have to pay for anything so far. We created an account and we created this service that is now available to other users and that was all for free, which is great. And if we go to pricing and then we click on read more about buy values pricing, this is the page showing how pricing works on the customer side. And up here is where you can see how it works from the API provider side. Essentially, if you're a user, buy value is going to count the exact amount of requests you make to an API. And every month at the end of your billing cycle, it is going to charge you the exact amount of money for the actual usage. So as a user, you're only paying for what you use. There's no quotas, there's no overcharges or hidden fees. And if you're a developer, you won't be charged anything until your API actually makes some money. If your API is successful, ByValue will take 10% of the revenue generated on their platform. So let's say your subscribers spent $100 on your API in the last month. ByValue will take $10 and credit you with the remaining $90. On the other hand, if your API didn't earn any money, you won't be charged anything. So this is their so-called risk-free solution for API monetization. It is very developer friendly and I think it's a great way to get started and fund your business without having to invest any money up front. ByValue also has a marketplace where they offer a variety of available APIs that you can use. You can search by categories and this is also where your API will be featured after it is published so that other people who are browsing their marketplace can find it and check it out. And that is pretty much it for this video. As you can see, the process of publishing your API to the Buy Value platform was very straightforward and easy. And the best thing is there's no drawback because of the risk-free pricing solution. I think Buy Value is definitely worth checking out if you have an API that you want to share with people and earn money from. I plan on making another video where I show how to make your own API from scratch and host it using the Buy Value platform. If that is something you're interested in, let me know in the comments. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments as well. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.